Back up. Okay. All right. Listen up. If you're inside, cool. If you're outside, either come in or stay out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to track one. And uh, be happy because, by the way, track two, the speaker canceled on us. But you have Boris like taking over. Oh, yeah, Boris so, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So, so it's cool. So we're happy. It's yeah. just the, it's the snub of a speaker. The ISD podcast out. That's great. Yeah. yeah. There you go. go. <laughs> okay, if I hear a single in the house joke, you go. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we know it's canceled. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick and Kurt Rengarajan. <laughs> That's my court name. Hey, welcome. So we're, today we're going to talk about OSINT, but we're going to talk about trying to go beyond what we feel is kind of the way that most people take an approach to when they're dealing with OSINT. Uh, as he said, my name is Rick Hayes. Uh, I am the founder and host of ISD Podcast. Uh, I'm a senior principal security consultant, and I don't know shit which this talk is actually going to prove. Um, so if I ever say I do, please humble me and remind me. Um, I'm Karthik Andaraj and I'm the co-host of InfoSec Daily Podcast for the last more than one year. I'm a principal security consultant. I thought I knew everything and then I started working with Rick. And he proved to me that I don't know shit, so I don't know shit. So. By the way, this is guy, the same guy that also created the, what did you call those, the fire talk? Oh, the quick fire talk. Okay, right. so quick he, did a, talk. he did a talk at a previous conference and it was supposed to be, what, an hour or something like that? It wound up being... No, it was supposed to be 30 minutes. It okay. wound up being 10 minutes or so. So. <laughs> so we had a joke that he was basically going to walk up the aisle, introduce himself, and then walk off the stage, and that was going to be the entire presentation for him. But we decided that since he can do some wicked-ass coding, we would let him do that. So. Yeah, that's why I'm on this. Anyway, shameless plug, ISD Podcast. Uh, Monday through Friday, we record every night, stream live. Uh, we have folks like Dave Kennedy, uh, Adrian Crenshaw, Boris, Karthik, myself. Uh, and so Bo Woods, a lot of other people that are joining us, and so uh, listen in. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily intelligent, but it, listen. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a podcast, right? So quick disclaimer, we're not lawyers. We didn't stay at a Holiday Inn. What we're talking about could be illegal depending on where you live, and quite frankly, it could be creepy. <laughs> So biggest thing, know your boundaries. By the way, respect to that old man for doing that, because you got to know he's like he's like Varun I'm with a chick, like eh, you know. So. Um, Why? Wow. <laughs> because you're sitting there. So yeah. So anyways, make sure you know your boundaries. But the biggest thing we want to do is encourage you to try stuff. So. <laughs> if you haven't seen this movie, you got to see it. I'm telling you. And we don't judge. So let, let's just go with that. So. Uh, OSINT. We talk about OSINT, but a lot of people know it. They say, well, what, what is it? And if you're trying to explain it to a C-level, you're saying, I want to do OSINT. They're like, you want to do what? To whom? Uh, so o OSINT is open source intelligence. And when we think of open source, or you're talking to someone else, they're going to think open source, oh, that's this, or, or this, or all of these. And when they think of intelligence, they may, in fact, think of this guy. Maybe not, but they may. They may think of something like this because they've seen a movie and they know, oh, you want to be Brad Pitt. I got that. You're going to go and be tortured by the North Koreans. And no, you may even think of this. And so it's, it's Mossad is, is wicked badass when it comes to that or this. And most people may not associate this with intelligence. So if you do or don't, that's up to you. But it's, it's got intelligence in its name, though. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, that makes it intelligent. So. Uh, OSINT. So if anyone's from the CIA, uh, my name is Kurt, K-U-R-T. Uh, so, uh, he doesn't have a last name. Yeah, no, no, no last name. OSINT is really just a form of intelligence collection using publicly available sources to generate, and here's the key component here, actionable intelligence. Can you do something with what you gather? Uh, these guys did a real good job. This is a Soviet. This is a, a, a Balsam intelligence. It's a signal intelligence ship back from the old Soviet era. They used to sit off the coast of the, the East Coast and collect all kinds of SIGINT. Mostly they were listening to a lot of rock stations, but they were collecting all kinds of intelligence and, and using that for their advantage. When we think of stuff like OSINT, we think, oh, it's just recon. We're going to get all you know, buffed up and go get our, our airsoft on. <laughs> Not necessarily. And unfortunately, this is what some people think is recon. Well, I ran an NS lookup, man. I'm good. I'm a lead hacker. 
but then I'm going to run this. So this is going to do everything I need. I just run Multigo, say find all transforms, generate a report. I'm done. I have all the information. And you can do it with this. This is a great tool. It's, it's also free. It's very difficult to install. Uh, Talk to Keith. He knows how to do it. Actually, Ian Amit, so uh, Ian Amit helped us actually figure out the proper way to get this installed and correct all of that. But uh, a lot of people will go to, like Aaron, and look for information to see who owns the net blocks, you know, where are they, that kind of stuff. Find ASN numbers so they can use those later. You may even use Netcraft. You may go and say, hey, I want to see what kind of web servers they run and how long they've been up and when's the last time they've been rebooted. And oh, they run IAS 5.1, you know, or something like that. And, and not that we're saying that's wrong, because it's not the wrong way, that's just really not the complete way. So you kind of just stopped and you've done the basics, but you hadn't really done everything that you need to do. So here's, a, here's not a shameless plug, pimping the P-Test. So these guys on the P-Test committee came up with this and these badasses, every one of these people contributed to something involving the P-Test Gs, the technical guidelines, uh, came up with this. The bottom line is we're all winning because of that. Well, let's get into a little background, right? I mean, let's understand how OSINT, what we've been doing with OSINT and all that. So there's essentially three types of OSINT collection. The first type is passive. Here's where you profile the company. You find out what the company does. You find out you know, who the people are, the executives, things like that. But the idea is you make no assumptions. And more importantly, you generate no traffic to the company's websites or network. So how do you do that? You use search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, or AltaVista for that matter. Or you might use some specialized things like Shodan so that you, know, you can look up uh, devices that are online that is not supposed to be online. Like, By the way, could you imagine having to say the Sentinel Hyper Optimized Data Access Network search? You I'm just glad said they it. just called it Shodan and just like, <laughs> you know, what are you using? So I'm sorry, it just, uh, I, when I saw that, I was like, wow, I'm glad they use an acronym for that. Yeah, no. So, so you can search for things like Cisco and you find all of the Cisco devices that are online and you know, obviously they're not supposed to be, but you know, you know how people are. Um, or you can even use Montego, NetLab, or if you want to use, you know, get archived information, you can use the Wayback Machine. Now, in addition to everything you do in the first step, which is the passive, there's the other one, the second step, which is the semi-passive. Um, this is where you generate normal traffic. Um, for a client, this is normal traffic. You do you know, manual browsing, you browse the website, uh, do a few things, just look up Wikipedia, or you can even, even use Burp Suite or Paro, so any of these proxies, and find out you know, minor vulnerabilities or anything that is there within the company. But the idea is you stay under the radar. You do not raise eyebrows, you do not you know, make system administrators go, oops, there's someone there. The final, the third way is active. This is where the dog gets the bone. You were so happy you could say that. Like, like, dude, I know I was waiting to say that. He goes, I'm going to say when the dog gets the bone. Yeah. I'm like, but that's two dude dogs. And he goes, he starts looking at it and goes, no, I think it's a female. So. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't judge. <laughs> well, this is where you actually generate abnormal traffic. Like, you know, tanks going on the road. That's abnormal, right? Well, that's abnormal unless you're in like a rock. And in which case, that may be normal traffic. Well, yeah, but let's put it this way: in Louisville or Louisville, as I've heard it been called. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what the yeah. Thank you. So, uh, in Louisville, that might be or Louisville. 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 Okay, Louisville. <laughs> so any. <anyway. laughs> <laughs> I'm from the south and I can't get it right, so we're easy, Atlanta. So anyways, in Atlanta, that would be abnormal traffic to see a bunch of tanks. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Damn so, German. The idea is you run you know, things like Nmap and you know, get all of the open ports, or even things like W3AF, WebInspect, if you really want to, AppScan or Sensec or any of these things. But the general idea is that you, know, you just look through all of this and you know, maybe even do some manual browsing and you get a picture of what the company's infrastructure looks like. You want a general idea of how the company's devices are set up, where their websites are, where their network is, things like that. But generally when people do OSN, they stop here. This is the end for them. But, but wait, there's more. Always more. 
So the one thing that we don't normally focus on, and I've, and I've actually started to hear a lot of people talking about it. It was great to listen to Carlos talk about the fact that when he was doing uh, reconnaissance, he did it for a couple of days. So the biggest thing is, in this case, is you would still focus on the infrastructure. So we heard tools being mentioned, and well, I can find out this, I can find out that. The other thing that you need to focus on is the actual corporation. And in the corporation, you can find by searching Google and Bing and Yahoo. Uh, but the, there's some answers that you need to find out, because if I just put in Walmart, guess what? I'm not going to get Walmart corporate information. I'm going to get their store. And while that may be the staple of mainstay America's online purchases, it's not certainly what I would be interested in if I'm trying to find out information to target them. Well, I may, I mean, so I can find store locations. But anyway, so what you want to do is you actually want to go through, and, and I apologize for the Balmer picture, but I was just looking for someone that may have been like a senior management in and, and a company. But the idea is you want to collect on the uh, information on the owners of the company, the senior management, board of directors, real estate holdings, any properties that they have, uh, corporate records. You want to find out if they, how much money do they have? How much money do they make? Where does the money come from that you can find out? Uh, what time zone do they operate in? You would be surprised at the number of corporations that are international that operate in multiple time zones. Uh, attacking someone with, a, with, like, I'm going to call them on the phone and they're gone is not really fruitful for you. You just wasted a lot of time calling an office that's closed. Um, so all of this information is stuff that you need to find out. If we're dealing with a Fortune 500 company, easy. You can go to certain, you know, there are sites you can go to, you can find this information readily available. You can even buy it in the open. People will sell information. Hoovers will sell profiles on companies. You can go and buy it. But we're talking about what can you gather you uh, in your job. and. If you're dealing, like I said, Walmart, you can go and grab, in this case, you can grab all of the information. I can find out uh, information on the corporation. I can find out information on how, who they are, where they're located, CEOs, what industry they operate in, what uh, transportation companies they use to transport the goods, all from one location, because a lot of people have done a lot of research. What if we're not dealing with a Fortune 500 company? What if we're dealing with a smaller business, uh, like a medium-sized business? Uh, we still have the same questions that we have to answer. We still have to know who the senior management is. Do they own property? Do they rent it? We still need to know uh, if they have a board. What if they're not publicly traded? They wouldn't have a board of directors potentially. So you, you can't find out information that doesn't exist. Private companies are extremely difficult to find out information on because they don't have a legal requirement to make information available. This is where the Secretary of State's websites come in. Because the idea here is I'm going to start targeting and focusing in every state within the United States. And this speech is very much U.S. centric. OK, um, so every state within the United States has a secretary of state's office that is responsible for issuing uh, business licenses, LLCs, uh, nonprofits. Uh, and on those, they most of them, I'd say the majority of them offer online searches because they don't want to be burdened with the fact that. Go download this form, print it out, fill it out, mail it in. We'll do the research and send you the information back. They can just put it all online and make it readily available. So we try to leverage that. And in this case, I went to, I'm from the state of Georgia. So we pulled up this, this fine establishment of. Oh, by the way, Boris claims he saw this person today, 19 bagels. Just yeah, saying. So, uh, Anyways, we pulled up this, this particular company. Some of you probably have never heard of this company. It's a small little boutique security firm. Um, it's, it's very specialized. Uh, yeah. So, so what we said was, hey, let's go ahead and figure out a little bit about this. So we go to the Secretary of State's uh, website. We pull up the information. We find a street location. The interesting thing about this is this is actually a Holiday Inn. Surprise. Uh, so it wasn't really much of a surprise, but so he, there's a Holiday Inn address is what the, the entity was registered under. Uh, but you can find out information about properties, who's responsible, lawyers and stuff like that. Those are potential places that you can go searching, do further searches for, or individuals that you could target. Uh, not that I would want to target his former law because uh, I know that's not his current lawyer, but, uh, <laughs> but the, the former lawyer that he had, obviously it's a potential target. Now, you're saying, great, I have a street address and I know he lives in this city. Most of us don't know how to correlate a search back to a particular um, 
county. And, and that's really important because when you're searching for properties, you have to take it down to a county level because they're the ones that are going to maintain those deed records uh, on that level. So what we, this, this is a wonderful website. Uh, Jordy Rostad, who also does real estate, um, he's a real estate mogul. That's a joke. A big one. Yeah. So anyways, uh, National Association of Counties. Jordy offered this up and said, listen, if you want to find properties, this is a great thing because all you have to do is go enter in a city or a zip code and you can find out the county that's associated with that. Now, I happen to know that Gwinnett uh, County is where Norcross, Georgia is, but there's, I didn't realize there's a Norcross, Minnesota. So if I was you know, looking for that, I would find the same thing. So I can now go to click on that one link and go to Gwinnett County. I can pull up this information. So I can see where all of the, you know, but the biggest thing I want to see is, well, two things. I want to see the website, but I can also look at the population. You can go and look at the Census Bureau so, Bureau so you can see demographics, especially if you're talking rural area. You can see uh, the education it, within those particular areas to see what type of facilities they may have there, if it's associated with a rural area. And that com becomes important in a little while. So we continue to kind of head down this rabbit hole with uh, that boutique security firm. So we head on over to that website, we pull up and we get their assessment and we find the, uh, the address and we get a street number, I mean a, um, a suite number associated with it. Now we can continue to further down and go look at this and actually pull up from the property ID number, land plats and stuff like that. Since we know this is not owned by him, it's sort of moot to continue on. However, you can look and see adjacent businesses around there and see what is potentially available. I think, who was it, Mitnick? Was he the one that was talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah so yeah, uh, you know, he posed as the guy going to New York and uh, you know, so then they got to see all the security stuff. This is a good way to find out that information. So why does it matter? Well, if you can find real estate holdings, you can find like information on remote offices, distribution centers, fulfillment centers, potentially call centers, corporate retreats, hunting lands. I'm from the South, so I know a lot of, lot of corporations own a lot of land and they have like little bitty uh, hunting retreats. They take executives out there from other companies to slaughter animals and, and show them, I guess, the prowess of their hunting skills. Is it? Okay. <laughs> All of those are potential targets. And I bring up that one because I um, was involved with a, uh, an, a, an ass assessment of a hunting retreat that had wireless access that was out in the middle of about 100 acres. Now, the interesting thing about that was you couldn't get it. You had to be actually on the property to, to be able to get the signal. But you can walk, and, and with a laptop, you've got enough battery power to do it. Uh, so. All of that had unencrypted wireless connectivity back into the corporate network <laughs> that uh, allowed all of their guests to be able to surf the web and all of the executives to be able to get to their corporate email and all of that other stuff. So not that I, obviously I'm not gonna go hiking in the woods, but if I were so inclined to do so, I could probably hike out there and uh, you know, set up some kind of a generator and sit there and just have fun. But the just point be being, careful you don't get shot though. It's hunting lines. Oh no, I've been told you're fine. Just don't run. Oh right. So, so the other thing you need to kind of focus on is like the market vertical. And the reason why that becomes important is because I will assure you that the corporate culture, let's say in hospitality, the corporate culture in a hospitality company is not the same as banking. I would dare say that's a fact. So you, you need to know what market verticals they operate in and potentially they operate in more than one based upon subsidiaries or divisions. It's important to understand that because that can dictate some of the ways that they operate as a corporation and what they see as valuable. Now when we talk about value, one of the things that you really need to understand is what do they make? If they make a widget, great. Where do they make it? How do they make it? Finding out this information, because really this is probably what they're most proud of, or in the case of like some software, the most ashamed of. But you could also find out what, what competitors would be interested in uh, obtaining potential source code or stuff like that. So you need to know a product that they make or sell. Let's say they don't have any products, they just sell services. Well, at some point in time, you got to think that they want to be able to continue to sell those services so that you, knowing what they sell and any potential new services that they're potentially looking at offering could become important for you to gather that information. Again, this is looking at it from if it's readily available, an attacker could look at this and say, 
I could do the same exact thing and find out the same information. So that's what we're looking at it from. Now, real quick, some of the stuff you need to kind of bold, kind of, I guess, boilerplate is you need to start looking at corporate dates. Important dates like if they're having a corporate retreat at the Hunting Lodge, when are they all going to be there? Uh, if they're having a board meeting, that's kind of important. Uh, when's the next big product going to launch? Uh, how often? Uh, what, and most of this can be you know, taken from their corporate website. So if you talk about marketing, almost every company likes to talk about themselves. Uh, they also will have job postings. Legal, file, uh, legal filings are important because you can see several things. You can see, are they being sued for intellectual property? Uh, is there any civil rights issues? Are there disgruntled employees? Because gruntled employees don't usually sue their employer. So uh, you need to find out about that. Where does the money come from? How do they generate revenue? Uh, if you can find organizational structures, that's something that's important to have so that you can look and see uh, really how this corporation is built. Because what you're trying to do is understand the corporation. We talked about marketing. Uh, here's Walmart Corporation. I don't care who you are. Uh, if you, if you um, are a corporation, most corporations, or 90% of them, with the exception of a few, I would say, love to talk about stuff they're doing. Even if they're not doing stuff, they want to talk about stuff that they're not doing, but they want you to think that they're doing because the perception is that they're doing something. So they have all of this marketing information out there, and they're talking about it. They talk about deals. They talk about this. They talk about that. Um, this actually talks about hiring new people, opening up a new facility and hiring new individuals. Kind of leads us down to this, job openings. So you can look at job openings. You can go to all of these websites. You can pull all of the information about the job postings that they have. A great place is obviously uh, some of the social network sites have job postings on there, as well as the corporate site itself. So if you can go to the corporate site and find out those, it's kind of important. You're going to say, well, why? Anybody look at this and tell me what would be important about, just look at the, uh, the, the actual responsibilities and tell me what would be important about that. What can you glean from that? How about the fact that they have some regulatory requirements that they have to adhere to? Just from one job posting, you have a good listing of what they have to adhere to or they want to adhere to, whether they do or don't. At least they're saying they need to. How about here? And this one's fairly obvious. Yeah. So I can see on this slide they're running, they're, they've clearly posted two versions of software that they're running and where they want to go to. They're running a particular version of uh, version 9, they want to go to 10, and Oracle 10G to 11G. So now I know what I'm looking for. So I can go through that and I can gather all of these technologies that they are using and I could potentially start using that to build a target list. Adam Compton, the guy yeah, with sitting the, in the back there. Where, where's Adam? Stand up, dude. So Adam has the beard of power <laughs> that he uses, and he wrote this. This is a wicked ass site. If you've never been there, please go and take a look at it. Don't kill his server, or and don't wind up on the naughty list. But you can go here and you can actually enter in keyword searches, and it'll pull every known exploit that is available for it for you. You can build a great list from this. It's nice to know I'm targeting this, and by the way, we did do searches and did find there's no exploits for this. So we, why would I go try down this rabbit hole of finding something when I know it doesn't exist? I'm going to target something that's readily available. This is 10G, and you're saying, eh, everybody knows about 10G. Well, data guard. You can continue to go through that and build a list and have those readily available for you. Another thing you need to start doing, you need to focus on the donations. What charities do they actually get involved with? What, com what are their competitors? What business deals have they signed? What infrastructure? Where do they have their infrastructure? Charities love corporations, and they love to tell you that they love corporations because they love the money from corporations. United Way has a great listing of every corporation that contributes significant amount of money to them. If you know this, this is a great mechanism for phishing attacks and actual physical attacks. Show up with a stand out in front of a facility that says United Way on it and see if anybody kicks you off the property. It probably wouldn't happen because you could say, I'm, I'm this. Not only that, this information actually contains the corporate sponsor's information so you can see who is the advocate within that corporation for this particular, for United Way in this case. Name dropping. Go ahead. Saying that you're with United Way during a test, I mean, during an actual test, if you decide... 
So the only thing that we know of, and, and again, I, I can go back to the third slide. We're not lawyers. So uh, the, the only thing that I can tell you is impersonating a government, governmental agency or officer of the government is illegal. Yeah, it's all. This is all boiling down to you're going to have rules of engagement that are going to govern how you're going to do this. The, the point we're trying to say is there is a lot of information out there, and a lot of people don't look at it in the same light. They would look at this and say, "Oh, great! Uh, I think 3M is the first corpora uh, corporation on there, or Abbott. Great, they donate to this." Well, why not use that? And if you had it in your rules of engagement that says, listen, we know you have a charity affiliation. How do you know that? Well, we've done our research. We're going to use that as part of our phishing attack. So the other thing that you can come up with is you've got to come up with a list of the competitors to know who is actually wanting to take over what they do. Who wants to succeed them at the king of the hill? And you find this information by crafting targeted searches. So in this case, I just entered in corporate meeting minutes, and you would be surprised at the number of corporate meeting minutes you can find out there. Google is your friend. Uh, I also wanted to find out, basically, I wanted to look for corporate holidays. Now, you can craft those down to a particular company, and you can find out, specifically within a region, what holidays they're going to be there. It's nice to know that they don't adhere to a certain holiday, but they adhere to others. So if you're going to target your attack, you're going to target it when, the highly, when you're going to have a likelihood of it succeeding. Uh, doing it on Christmas Day in America is probably not going to be successful. Doing it on December 25th and you're tar targeting a company in Israel, you're probably not going to have the, you'll, you'll probably have the same results, depending on the day. So here, we're actually going and we're looking for, in this case, we're looking for Verizon, but we're searching on Cisco sites and we're finding out what is Cisco or employees of Cisco saying about Verizon. We see a, a release up here on a 4G version of some software that's released, some other information. Again, this is all crafting these researches to make sure that you gather the most information. Company history is important to know where they came from. How did they get started? What was their core competency? Have they changed it? Data center locations, this is kind of important. That, that bottom map is Microsoft. They love to brag about where their data center locations are, and I think that's the one where WikiLeaks is located. It looks like something from a movie, like hackers or something. So you can find the super secret data center. So I don't know if anybody knows this, but this is Mar Walmart's super secret data center that was posted on the web. You can zoom in and see that they've done some really tedious landscaping <laughs> of that of that facility, but you can find out information. If you can't find it by that, you can potentially use a who is, and you can find some information to know where their offices are, and then maybe they may just hosting it out of an office. Traceroute will tell you if it goes back to a hosted facility, if it's a colo, do they have it sitting there? Can you, can you track that back? We talked about ASNs. If you can find a, uh, the, use the BGP looking glass, you can actually find out what are the routers that are presenting those BGP networks and potentially trace that back. Again, it's all the information, it's putting it together. If you can put it together, you can potentially GeoIP geo locate that and track out an entire network for a corporation. We talked about some of the physical characteristics. It's interesting that you can use some of the capabilities now that uh, you can actually find cameras and security gates by using Google Maps and Google Earth and Bing. And you can even zoom in and see what they look like. Lights, camera, action. So you can see the flood light. I can see a camera down here and a PTZ camera right there in the middle. And I know where they're covering as a general rule. I haven't even been on site to this facility, but I can tell you that. Unless it's changed, and I can tell you there's changes, but the point being you have a general map. If I can outline this, I can, generally, I can at a high level figure out where they have camera coverage and where they don't. I also figure out where they have, that sucks. I can figure out where they have damage. This was going to be funny because it was like a little hole and I was going to say I could shimmy through there if I was like 100 pounds lighter and all that. But, uh, so anyways, this is a fence that's damaged that has a hole in it. Trust me, I couldn't shimmy through it right now. <laughs> so this is kind of critical information that you can use and you've never even stepped foot on a property. You hadn't been on a plane. You hadn't been anywhere. RF and wireless information, the frequencies, what do they use? You can go and you can find out what spectrum they paid for. In this hotel right now, using something like this, you could actually listen to all of 
the conversations that the folks at DerbyCon are having, and since it can transmit, you might be able to interject some stuff. Uh, you can listen to hotels. We I actually didn't... listened this morning to yeah. some people arguing over delivery of fuel to a shell station. <laughs> so the point being, you can look at the frequencies and, and you can find out information very passively. Now, I'm not naive enough to sit here and think that you can do it from sitting in Atlanta, targeting somebody in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Not going to happen. You have to kind of be close enough to be able to get the signal propagation, but you can narrow it down. Let's talk about wireless. You can go to WiggleNet. You can subscribe and you can actually enter in some IP address or I'm sorry, some address information and you can pull up spots that are at least APs that have been identified and when they were last identified. If you can locate that down uh, to a geo coordinates, you can actually find companies listed in here. By the way, red in this case is not good. That would mean unencrypted. So, uh, Email addresses. Email addresses are everywhere. We would like to have them. Why do we want to have them? We want to have them because we can use them for phishing attacks. They're also going to tell you a lot of good information that a lot of people don't think about. I can see if a company has changed their domains from something else to, to a new domain or a new email structure. New email structure can say several things. It can say we've migrated from one system to another. We've changed administrators because one administrator didn't like this. They liked the dot versus the underscore and the other person didn't like that. They like to jam it all together. And so it's going to tell me a lot of information. It's also going to tell me uh, potential usernames. So I have that and I also have names that I can use for other types of crafted searches. If I see an email address associated with a name and can correlate it back to something else, when? Well, Harley Girl 38 is probably not gonna work though. Do what? The Harley Girl 38, that was the first email. Yeah, but, so all of this, a lot of people will look at this and pump all this data into Maltigo and, and kind of spit out a report and say, that's great, now I've got all these email addresses, let's go have fun. Well, that's not the end of it. In fact, that's actually not a tool that we use to harvest the, the emails. We use the harvester because it really does a good job. So we can go through and we can full, pull all of these and compare them with the results that we have in Maltigo. So now I have two tools that I'm looking at to harvest this information. I then take that and through the magic of importing a CSV, I can take all of those email addresses and all of those names, import them back into Maltigo and run transforms that are targeted against those. So how do we deal with leakage? So, well, it was, wasn't anything floating in that, so it was okay. So, uh, FOCA. FOCA, you hear it talked about. FOCA Pro is our favorite. The, the idea is it takes metadata, or it basically does searches uh, for documents, finding metadata that are found within those documents. You download them, you uh, extract the metadata, and then you can generate a report. It's going to tell you information. Carlos talked about it. Users, folders, printers, software, email, uh, and operating systems. It's somewhat accurate. Okay, but it's good to get a start. This shouldn't be the end of your OSINT though. Unfortunately, it is for most folks. That's where they stop. I'm done, thank you. It's the quick fire talk? The quick fire talk. Quick fire talk. So, you know, and then you're off the stage. We're leaving out a big segment of the population within a corporation. Now, some executives may say you don't need them, but most of these people actually do stuff that's kind of important. So. I always say I want to learn from others. So I don't know how many of you remember this. It wasn't so long ago, but the idea is, you know, everybody said, oh, they've invented doxing. Well, uh, the people from LOD and MOD may argue that back in the early 90s that they kind of came up with the whole doxing thing, but the idea was finding people's real name, their jobs, where they went to school, their phone numbers, addresses, parents' names, parents, jobs, relatives, sisters, brothers, social security numbers, anything personal about that individual that you could use. We want to do the same thing, only we don't want to break any laws doing it, okay? And we really want to craft our searches and what we're finding to what's relevant to, to our actions. Again, it's actionable intel. A full name, the particular job title they may have, address, where they work, I'm not going to say that potentially where they live wouldn't be important because it could be. Um, unless you live in Austin, in which case the police are asking or going around telling you to shut down your open wireless, I think that uh, <laughs> there's the potential for open wireless at someone's house. Where they went to school, great for crafting emails that would say, um, I'm your alumni and I want you to join me. Reunion. Yeah, reunion. <laughs> Lemon party at four. Uh, phone numbers, friends and family, that's all good. 
So you got to start someplace. Normally, you're going to start with a first name, last name, city, state, kind of a location, a general area, email address. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we start going through all of these social networks and we start looking for this information. It's not the first thing you need to do. You need to target your searches. In this case, we're targeting a business. We need to look at the, cor the corporation and see who's actually listing themselves as an employee who's got their, their LinkedIn profiles up to date. So you can start using that. You can do crafted searches again. Here I'm looking for engineers at Verizon. So I wanna find somebody, cause I wanna find out about more about their infrastructure. I wanna see who's got uh, an interest in Cisco. What groups do they belong to? Because those groups that they list in LinkedIn are very important. You can join them. Hey dude, I work at Verizon too. I'm a sis too. No, sis. I hate to say it, but Facebook, and I'm gonna pick on one person on this slide only because it was the last person on the slide. Also, uh, she was cute and looked like her. I didn't say I liked her, I just... Said she was cute? Yeah, she looked cute. So, <laughs> Facebook, you can go do searches for who has or currently works at a corporation. So if I take that, and yes, I'm picking on the last one, I can see that they live in Denver, Colorado, they were born in Denver, Colorado, they went to Coronado High School and they worked at, they currently work at Verizon as an HR consultant and they've worked at Verizon uh, Wireless, again, 1989, so I know how old they are. We'll get back to more, that in a second. I can also find out who doesn't like you. There's a lot of folks out there putting Facebook pages about you suck. Not you personally, but your company sucks. Uh, so this is the Verizon sucks, and you can see that, and potentially, it'd be interesting to see if you have employees that are actually liking those posts that say that you suck. Gruntled, don't think so. So you take that information, you can go to these, these websites and do, uh, you can pay for these. You can do background investigations and tell us and Lular. I just like this, yo name. What's uh, your name? So you can actually do searches on social networks and blogs, Spokio, people. You can actually do this. And this is a wonderful one because it actually will search 300 different social networks based upon a username. So if you can correlate anything that you can find out on any of those social networks and run something like Creepy, and not the creepy dude in the first one, but Creepy program that actually does geo, uh, looks for geotagging information, then you can actually be winning. So you can correlate it down to someone's alias is what they have been known, what their age is, date of birth, phone number, where they actually currently live and where they've ever lived. I looked at that and I went, you're cruel. And now I can find out what apartment number they live in. So move in next door. Again, it's targeting the searches. And by the way, part of this came from the, what was the eco-conscious stalker or how to yeah. stalk women using, never mind. So I don't know how many of you remember this. I still use, use net, so, but you can do searches out there and find all kinds of information, not only porn, but you can find other interesting things too, like people pour, <laughs> posting stuff, asking questions. There's still a use for that. Now it's kind of more transitioned over to this with the asking of questions. You can go out to the groups, mailing list, all sorts of archived information out there. Chat rooms, you can search IRCs, not efficiently, but you supposedly can. Uh, forum searches, again, uh, does a pretty good job of searching those. You can look and see if they've got some desire to be a rapper. We do a podcast and coming through the airport, I always get asked if I'm a DJ. After I'm being probed like five or six times and the guy asked me, I said, yes, I'm a DJ. He let me go. So you can go out here and find out all kinds of information about people uh, if they've got a uh, podcast, if they've got a desire that they've done, you know, done their own music. This is actually really large. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of people that are out there, not myself, but obviously, example um, given, that post videos of themselves, look at me lose weight. Well, or <laughs> look at me do karate. Yeah, yeah. So some people actually film themselves in a garage doing karate moves. And then Rick mixes that with porn? Yeah, well, porn music. All oh, right. It's yeah. a mashup. The idea is to take all of this information and really start making these connections because individually it's nothing. It doesn't really mean anything. And NMAP alone just tells you a part of the story. When you're doing a penetration test, it doesn't really give you the whole picture. So the idea is to make the connections, right? But before that, let's look at where we are now. Mostly lost, but let's look anyway. 
All of us who do this, if we're all numerous Google or Bing darks, in my case, I see for Brick, but we essentially have a whole bunch of them. How many? 5,000, something like that? 5,000 dorks that we would use. 5,000. 5,000. Which, which means multiple, whoa, multiple windows and tabs, you know, say 100 tabs. How many of you here have said, oh my god, Firefox crashed, 100 tabs gone? Or, you know, multiple searches, you start all over again. The point is that it's inconsistent. More importantly, it's a pain in the ass. So how do you take this, this, or even, you know, this, and put that into a single thing? So me and Rick, were, or Rick and I, were working on <laughs> this engagement which took us around 18 hours which was very intensive and we were like what we need is an awesome browser and that's how this came up so what we wanted to do was take all of the information all of our search strings all of the google docs we had and put them together in a single interface or make a you know a fake browser like a browser within a browser or something like that so the idea is that you have this right you enter the domain the stock symbol the company name all of that and you have a bunch of things on your left which is, you know, all of the searches. Now, now, I want to point out something. This was before lunch. This was before lunch. Implementation, okay? implementation pending. This was before lunch. Just remember that. It's important. Okay. Post Panera, that works. So, <laughs> so and so once you have that, you have, you know, you can. So we have, like, as you see there, you have two things: radio reference, company executives. But you have you pull down all the radio reference. Now here's the thing. Here's what is important. This is 58 different searches, each of them with 10 different links you need to click on. Essentially 199 different clicks in one click, which gives you all of this. So, That's what so this is. Understand that. To go to radio reference and search per state, per entity, named entity, 59 individual searches you have to conduct to get that. And here's the thing, 30% of them are not going to give you anything. So you've wasted 30% of your energy for, well, nothing, right? Um, so this is what we came up with. You can see on the left that we have a bunch of things, and uh, you know we're going to demo. We have a demo soon where hopefully it'll work. But the requirements to run this are fairly simple. You need to have Apache or a similar web browser that can render HTML for you, or that can serve HTML for you. Sorry, um, sorry. Yeah, Python. Um, I say 2.7 because I've had encoding issues with earlier ones. Um, I use Cherry Pie. Uh, it's a very fast. Um, you know, small web, small web server that serves up um, content for you. Um, Arikan, thanks for pointing that out to me. Uh, I've, I use Mechanize, HTML to text, simple JSON, and beautiful tool for parsing stuff, pulling down things, serving up JSON, things like that. And also, you, you can't use links. You need Firefox or Chrome or one of these things. So that's how this works, right? All right it's so, a demo. So pray the demo gods are kind. Uh, well, all right, so forgive my not thinking of the 1024 and the 768 browsers. I'm not good at UI. This is probably the best UI I come up with. Think about that. So um, here we've, uh, it's already, yeah, okay. I'm gonna try something because I wanted to, I, I didn't tell you I was gonna mess with this. <laughs> yeah, so I told him, don't mess with it so once it's loaded. It, so I'm gonna go ahead and, ah, we'll leave it. So the idea is in this first part, you actually have to set three variables. You have to, and this is important, and when, when you understand what, what we're using those for, uh, you saw from the previous search strings that we were saying, I need to know the corporate entity or the domain. So I need to know the corporate name or the domain. And the reason why we, that becomes important is because, ah, don't settle. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, go. Cool. Oh, so the idea is that becomes important because we're going to be looking for stuff related to that domain, related to that stock symbol, or related to that company name. Okay? So the idea would be to go and, and pull up, in this case, uh, there was Verizon, uh, was the search. So what we did was we actually said, Wikipedia is a great source of information for this. So I can find out information here, like they're publicly traded, I can see their stock, we already knew that, but I can find out their, what they're traded as and where they're traded. I can also find out where their headquarters, who some key people are, service lines, revenue, and that type of stuff. So uh, number of employees, website. Now, obviously, I'm hoping I know all of this, but it also does, in most of these, provide a corporate the, uh, a corporate version, because they basically are going to write their own wiki pages, and if you change it, they're going to change it back anyway. So it's a corporate version of them, what they think they are or who they are, and their history, the guys. Um, so the idea would be to go and... This is 
Well, it's going to take a little time to load because our yeah. internet is not the best that is there, but it actually loaded already. Some of it did. Yeah. So but, um, the idea is you don't have to go to different tabs. I mean, yeah, you still need to load up, you know, pages from Wikipedia, pages from all of that. But the idea is we give you all of these results. We make your job easier. You don't have to come up with your own list. If you have your own list, that's cool. You can integrate it into that. We're working on that. But the point is we make your life easier by giving you things you can just look at, copy, paste, document, whatever you want. Um, that's still loading. That's just taking too much time. Your internet is slow. But... Um, Oh, now it came. So you can get <laughs> this is all of the this is all of the information of the executors of Visa. So you go there, you look at all of that. So you get you know who Mr. Saunders is, uh, what where he's where he was educated, what his education is, how long he has been with them, how old he is, and all of that. So you get all of that in a single page. Again, this was. You know, depending on the number of executives, that's a lot of searches and writers. I was going to include Twitter, Facebook, and Wikipedia for all of these guys, but I forgot what I was trying to do on Python, so I just left it alone. Uh, this is still running. It takes about three, two to three minutes. Yeah, so searching this, again, it's those 59 searches, so we're trying to render this in one location for you to be able to pull it all down. And the idea is this was, n what was this, an alpha alpha? Well, Before oh, there, it rendered, see? Okay. Well, so wow, dude, when, you're excited that it actually rendered. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we came into Louisville, I was telling Rick, this is pre pre alpha. Then I told Adrian, Adrian's not pre it's pre alpha. Now it's alpha because things are working. So, so you have all of the frequencies that you know that is registered on this this particular company. Um, you got all the finances. You got company executive details, but. There's more. I mean, we haven't worked on it, obviously, but you have, a, if you'll see on the left, there's something called perform standard list of Google Docs. That's our f list of 5,000 Google searches that we think are important. You can add your own list. If you have 500, 5,000 different fonts, go so, ahead. So it's going to be parsed in a text file. You can actually read that text file, add your own at the bottom, or change or delete or whatever. Say, I don't want to run these. I want to run my own. This is what I want to do. The so so the, the, the idea is... Um, to actually, yeah, I think we're done with that. So yeah. the, the idea is is to really allow you, it, it's got some extensibility to it. You can make it what you want and have it render what you want. The fact of the matter is I got two minutes. Okay, next step, uh, we need your feedback. If you have strings, search strings. Don't look so sad, dude, it's all right. Uh, search strings, methods, anything that you do. Uh, here's my leg. drunk yet. Here's my leg. Uh, so additional searches. <laughs> That's a personal thing, I'm sorry. So additional searches, we're gonna to continue to add. Integration, we wanna integrate, uh, take results from NetGlobe, Harvester, Foca. We wanna, be search. Able, we wanna be able to add some alerting so that you can actually monitor pages on a daily basis. Report generation, this is important but because it, it's not gonna generate an OSINT report for you, it's gonna tell you the information that was collected, data strings, URLs, so that someone can repeat the process. The important thing is we are not gonna do your work, we're just gonna make it simpler. You still need to do the human analysis. Yay, DerbyCon, and by the way, that's Indo-Rush. If you haven't tried it, we talk about it all the time. You can hear them on the next room. You yeah. can actually hear them. So uh, this is now for release. It'll be on our website. You can contact me, Rig at ISD Podcast, Karthik at ISD Podcast, and that's it. This is going to be my first code release out of all the 5,000 lines of source code I've written in, in the history. I think this is the slowest you've talked to. Oh, questions. yeah, that's true. Two questions, real quick. Uh, is it available now? It is not. Dude, we just left Panera and walked over here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be available soon as soon as I fix a few things. Yeah. Like make it work. But. So, thanks, guys. Thank you.